rugged coastlines, industrial cities, rural landscapes and historic castles. Ulster has a wealth of places to see and explore. For centuries, the comings and goings of folk between Ulster and Scotland have left their mark on our landscape and people. I'm Lolly Spence, and in this short series, I'll be visiting some of the most stunning visitor attractions Northern Ireland has to offer, many of them steeped in Ulster Scots history. Today, I'm in the North Down and Ards Peninsula area of County Down, historically an Ulster Scots heartland. This part of East Ulster has been steeped in Ulster Scots history and tradition for centuries. Its townlands, buildings and heritage, even the people's surnames, connections with Scotland remain strong to the present day. I'm starting our journey in the town of Donachadee. Welcome to Donachadee, a beautiful little town on the very east coast of County Down. If you had been where I am here, 400 years ago, things would have looked very, very different. Boatload upon boatload of Scottish settlers were making their way across the Irish Sea to land here. So why did these Scots come here to Ulster from their land just across the sea? Well, they came as tenants of two Scottish lairds. Sir James Hamilton and Sir Hugh Montgomery had acquired large tracts of land here in East Ulster and now they wanted to settle the lands with tenants. The Scots, coming from their homeland to begin a new life, brought lots of things with them. They brought seeds to plant. They brought their farming implements. They brought their surnames. They brought their religious beliefs. They brought folklore and customs and recipes, habits. And they brought their individual way of speaking. And to this day, we've got lots of Scottish words still in the vocabulary of Northern Ireland. Without realising, you might know some Ulster Scots words already. Thon means that. Danner is Ulster Scots for a walk. And of course, we is small. So we've left the town of Donachadee behind us and come a few miles on round the coast to Bangor. And this is where that Scottish laird, Sir James Hamilton, made his home in the early 1600s. Today, however, it houses this grand building, which is Bangor Council Offices and the North Down Museum. This is a fabulous wee museum. It tells the story of the history of this area from the Bronze Age to the present day, and it houses hundreds of interesting artefacts and exhibitions. I'm very fortunate to see firsthand some beautiful documents which shed a light on the story of local Ulster Scots settlement. They're maps prepared by a 17th century cartographer called Thomas Raven. These colourful charts mark out the progress of settlement in this area, detailing geographic features, land boundaries, and the names of the families who were living here. Now, I feel very privileged to have been invited into this magnificent council chamber to look at one of the original Thomas Raven maps commissioned for Sir James Hamilton, probably around 1625, 1626, something like that. It's incredible to think that almost 400 years ago, Thomas Raven was traveling around these lands with his watercolors, marking out the lands, and James Hamilton must have been delighted to see the extent of his Scottish settlement and to see the shape of this town of Bangor. So some things are still recognizable. We can see the Bay of Bangor here marked. We can see the old abbey, which is so much older. Here we have what looks like James Hamilton's new house and the streets laid out, neat little streets. We can see the names of some of those Scottish settlers as well. There's Browns here, and that looks to me like Hamilton's Park over here. The Commons, we see an area, that's a Commons area. The Cross Hill with a cross marked on it. Some beautiful little buildings are also marked out. And look at the rabbits, look at the Coney Burrow. Coney, a lovely word for a rabbit, which we'd still use in some Ulster Scots places today. And the little rabbits, of course, the settlers and James Hamilton would have wanted to know about the presence of rabbits, because they could be used for their meat and also for their fur. So this was a valuable resource. There's John Wilson's park up there. Sander, Blair, Hamilton, more of these names. It's just really fascinating picture, this was Bangor over 400 years ago. 
and Bangor today is a popular tourist hotspot for day trippers, easily accessible from Belfast. Before we leave Bangor, we've come down to the harbour to look at this building, which takes us right back to that Ulster Scott settlement of the early 17th century. This building, this large stone building, was built in 1637 for Sir James Hamilton, and this is where his first Ulster Scott settlers came to pay their taxes. It's a very Scottish building in terms of its architecture. This great stone fortified tower. Then up at the top, we have what are known as crow step battlements little up, down, up, down steps along the top. And then there's this corbelled tower. It reminds me of an ice cream cone. These corbels supporting the upper projecting tower. It always strikes me as amazing that such an old building, a historic building, 400 years old, stands right in the heart of this busy road in a modern town. I'm on the road again, travelling south along the Ards Peninsula on the shores of Strangford Loch. This beautiful building behind me is Mount Stuart House, one of our most loved visitor attractions. It sits here in a magnificent landscape setting just on the east shores of Strangford Loch. We're a few miles outside the historic town of Newton Ards. We talked earlier in Donica Day about Sir Hugh Montgomery, who acquired lands in County Down in the early 1600s. This beautiful area was part of his territory. Fast forward then to 1744, and the land here had passed on to the Stuart family. Therein began their long history with this part of East Ulster. The Stuart family first came to Ulster from Scotland with the plantation of Ulster in the early 1600s. But by about the mid 1700s, Alexander Stuart and his wife had acquired land here in County Down. Their son, Robert, became the first Earl and then the Marquess of Londonderry, and it was he who extended the small house which originally stood there into this magnificent two story building. Mount Stuart passed down through generations of the family and it was Lady Mary, daughter of the seventh Marquess, who presented the house and many of its contents to the National Trust in the mid-1970s, including some of this beautiful tableware and the incredible art. The National Trust undertook an extensive conservation and restoration project at Mount Stuart. Completed in 2015, this work safeguarded the building and preserved it for years to come. There's plenty for visitors to explore outside Mount Stuart House as well. The beautiful gardens here at Mount Stuart are very much the vision and the legacy of Edith, Lady Londonderry, who lived here a hundred years ago. These gardens are considered one of the top ten in the world and they contain all kinds of varieties of plants and trees and shrubs and flowers which flourish in this unusual microclimate on the Ards Peninsula. The National Trust repaired the paths of the Mount Stuart Estate as part of their restoration project and on three miles of walking trails you can enjoy views of woodland and orchards and look across Strangford Loch towards the Mourne Mountains. Visitors to this part of North Down and Ards will be amazed by the beauty of the natural landscape. But they'll also find echoes of the Ulster Scots history that first came over here with Hamilton and Montgomery 400 years ago. Whether it's in the landscape, or the architecture, or the surnames, or the funny wee ways that we sometimes talk, you can still find those echoes of the Ulster Scots who first made this place their home more than 400 years ago. Why don't you come and discover this Ulster Scots history for yourself?